What new discoveries are waiting out there? What new adventures can we see? What are the answers to the never-ending questions in your brain that's in a race to find the reason or the place from deep on Earth to outer space so that the truth of any case can be unfurled in the real world? Science in the real world. Hi, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Every living organism on Earth needs energy in order to live. Most animals and plants get the energy they need to survive and grow through nutrients found in food. Most plants, like grass, get energy from the sun. Some animals, like zebras, get energy and nutrients from eating plants. And some animals, like lions, get their energy and nutrients from eating other animals, such as zebras. Energy moving from one living thing to another can be shown as a food chain. Let's find out more about food chains in the real world. Links in the food chain. A food chain shows the relationship between the plants and animals in different land and water ecosystems. There are different parts or links that make up the food chain. The links include producers, consumers, and decomposers. Let's learn more. In every ecosystem, you will see producers, consumers, and decomposers. They each play an important role in the food chain. Producers. Let's begin our discussion with producers. A producer is any living thing that produces its own food. Plants are producers. Plants produce their own food. Like all living things, they need food to live and grow. To produce food, plants use light energy from the sun, carbon dioxide from the air, and minerals and water from the soil. This process is called photosynthesis. The food plants produce is called glucose. Glucose is the food that gives plants energy to live. Look around your community. You'll find producers everywhere. Trees, bushes, flowers, vegetables, and grass. They're all producers. Consumers. Now let's talk about consumers. A consumer is an animal that needs to eat plants or other animals to survive. Animals can't make their own food, so they need to consume or eat plants, animals, or both to get energy. Consumers cannot produce their own food. All animals are consumers. Like all living things, including animals and people, they need energy to live, grow, and change. All living things get energy from food. Animals use energy whenever they move, whether it's eating, running, or flying. To get energy, animals and people need to eat or consume plants or other animals. There are three kinds of consumers. Some consumers are herbivores. Herbivores eat only plants. Cows are herbivores. Giraffes, pandas, hummingbirds, and sheep are herbivores too. Some consumers are carnivores and eat only other animals. Lions are carnivores. Spiders, crocodiles, and sharks are carnivores too. 
Some consumers are omnivores. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Bears are omnivores. Pigs, chimpanzees, and humans are omnivores too. Most people eat both plants and animals to get the energy and nutrients they need. Decomposers. Now let's talk about decomposers. A decomposer recycles dead plants and animals. Sounds gross, but they are a very important part of the food chain. You see, when plants and animals die, they become food for decomposers. An example of an animal decomposer is an earthworm. Earthworms eat dead plants and animals. The waste that earthworms leave behind is rich in nutrients. Nutrients help plants to grow. Some insects, like the dung beetle, are decomposers. They collect animal droppings and form them into a ball. The dung beetle then places the ball in an underground nest to provide nutrients for its growing young. Some bacteria are decomposers too. As a decomposer, bacteria helps turn dead organisms into nutrients. Fungi are another type of decomposer. Mushrooms are a type of fungi. Molds and mildew are examples of fungi too. Decomposers like mushrooms can start off with a dead log or fallen leaves and recycle the material into rich soil which is then reused by new plants back at the start of the food chain. Decomposers help recycle the nutrients found in waste back into the environment. If nutrients were not recycled in our environment, they wouldn't be available to living organisms. Now you know the links of the food chain. Producers, consumers, and decomposers. It's easy to see how all of nature is interconnected and related. Different habitats, different food chains. Let's take a look at how the links all come together in different habitats to form food chains. A food chain shows the relationship between the plants and animals in different habitats. Every habitat has its own food chain. In a grassland habitat, the food chain can begin with a plant-like grass. Grass is the producer. The grass is eaten by a plant-eating consumer like a zebra. The zebra can be eaten by another consumer, a carnivore, like a lion. In this scenario, the lion is called the predator. A predator is an animal that eats other animals. The zebra is known as the prey. Prey is the animal that the predator eats. When the lion dies, its body is eaten by decomposers. There are food chains in ocean habitats too. In the ocean, seagrass gets its energy from sunlight and the seawater. Some plant-eating fish, herbivores, get their energy and nutrients from eating the seagrass. Then carnivorous fish, such as sharks, get their energy by eating other fish. A shark is one of the ocean's fiercest predators. In every habitat, the food chain is a full cycle of life and energy. All living things depend on each other to survive in the real world.